I did when I was a young boy. I don't even. I wasn't a young boy. I've not been the wellest person, although I'm not, I'm not sick. I just, well, that's what I wanted to ask you. When do you think you'll be up to doing the regular weekend shows? And all? I'm, I'm going to start it. Really? Yes, ma'am. Yes, I, I was on last week. I, and, uh, of course, this matinee. I, but I, I've been... I'll be back on my Friday and Saturday show from now. Well, when somebody's been as sick as you've been, does that change your attitude toward life a lot? Did you? The what? When somebody's been as sick as you've been, does that change your whole attitude toward life very much? No, no, I don't. I don't think so. I don't think it's changed me any. I, I've tried to. I've tried to live a life of realizing that. Sometime I have to leave here. No, we are, yeah. And I, I, I want to stay as long as I can, and I, I, I want to be with the Grand Ole Opry as long as I can. I, I want to stay with the Grand Ole Opry as long as I feel that I am an asset to the opera. Mm -hmm. They need me. But when it comes to the time when the opera does need, not need Roy Acre, why, then I'm ready to say thank you to all of them. I bet when you were sick, you got all kinds of prayers, letters, things from the public. Did you get me? What sort of mail did you get? And did you get a lot of people saying our church is praying for you? Yes, yes. I got they have special <laughs> prayer services and so many people that offered their prayers for me. And, and, of course, I received thousands of uh, get well cards from all over the mm -hmm. whole country. Uh, in other countries, I, I heard from other countries sent me get well cards. And, uh, flowers and fruit and things like that. Uh, you really uh, maybe don't realize uh, the friendship that you do have in country music until. Uh, something happens to you, and then when you realize how close the people are uh, keeping up with your life and all that. What was the most distant country you heard from? Don't kick whoever's kicking. The most distant? Country you heard from. I mean, did someone in South Africa or China write and say, get well? That's Switzerland, I believe, was one that I got a get well card from in Japan. Hmm. Some, some of them know me. And they get wind of it through some of the uh, news media, maybe through uh, <coughs> uh, country magazines and things like that. Yeah, well, when you were so sick, did you make any kind of bargain with, I don't know how to put this, I guess you just say a bargain with God, you know, say, let me get through this and I'm going to do so and so. I'm going to, something you were going to, you know, do if you got another chance. You understand what I mean? Did I, I say, when you were so ill, did you sort of make a bargain that if you got well, there was something you were going to do you hadn't done before that you'd really like to do and you weren't going to put it off any longer? No. Nothing like that? No. I've known one or two people who've been very ill and it's made them decide, well, now when I get over this, I'm not going to put that off anymore. I'm going to do whatever it is I've been putting off. Well. Um, I think it's a little late then. <laughs> I would rather know that today, that if I go to the hospital tomorrow, I haven't got uh, too many things to, to say that I'm sorry for. Are you a religious man? I was uh, raised up in a a uh, very religious home. I uh, felt that I had been saved when I was a young man, and I have strayed away many times, but I believe in the uh, doctrine of the missionary Baptist people that if you're, you pray, your sins can be forgiven. Yes, sir. You, uh, you still have equal as good a chance as the other person to live and to, to survive in a peaceful place after death. That's what I believe. That's what I believe, too, and it's a real comforting thing to believe, isn't it? Yeah. But I know. I don't, 
Uh, my father was a missionary Baptist minister, mm -hmm. but uh, he didn't save me and I wasn't saved through him, I, uh, but I was brought up in a home of uh, prayerful people and I was raised in the country where we all went to Sunday school and church. And I sang in the choir and I went to BYPU and I, uh, I've always been very proud of that fact. Mm, yes, sir. Well, you know, more and more people, show people particularly, I believe, are suddenly looking around for God. I wrote a book with Shirley Boone, Pat, uh, Shirley and Pat Boone, I asked yeah, me to do a book yeah. with Shirley. And as a result of that, a publisher then a few years ago asked me to do a book about religious convictions of stars. And I told him I didn't know whether I should do that or not. I felt kind of like maybe I was too shy or something to ask people. So I just said, Lord, if you want a book like that written, just have some people suddenly come up and tell me some of their stories. All of a sudden, people were coming up telling me these interesting stories about how they turned to the Lord. So I wrote the book. It worked out. But I think more and more, People in show business, I know, are just looking around for God. They all of a sudden need something. Well, if they, <clears throat> if they want to find him, he's there. Mm -hmm. That's true. You don't have to go searching for him. He's been with them all the time. The thing about it, they haven't realized it. Mm -hmm. they, I thank you, sir. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, I, I don't, uh, they, nowadays, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a very peculiar person in some, some ways. I think there's a time and place for all things, but I think that God is present at all times, and you should realize it, but I don't think in front of an audience that I've got to go out here and, and entertain a grand old Opry audience. I don't think that I have to go out there and start making confessions and all those right. things. And for those people, they have their churches to go to, right. and they have their way of, of worshiping. And I think when I hit that stage out there, I go out to entertain. Mm -hmm. And if people can see Christianity about my entertainment, that's great. But I don't say, now let's all have a prayer, yeah. and I'm going to sing, she'll be coming around the mountain. I don't do those things. Mm -hmm. I just feel that His presence is there. and. I act according to my knowledge of how I can entertain, and I don't. Uh, I don't believe in just uh, being uh, a, a religious person out in front of that audience out there. I believe in being a religious person back here, wherever I am. Yes, sir. Or I try to live that way. Yes, sir. Which of your songs do you get most requests for? I mean, well, my most songs are uh, are requested of number that I actually. Re recorded on my first recording session and one that I introduced to the Opry and when I came here in 1936, they are the great speckled bird in the Wabash Cannonball. Yeah, right. Yes, sir, right. I they're they're the two <laughs> most requested numbers and I always do them because people expect me to. Uh -huh. You never get tired of doing them? I won't say I get tired of doing them. I, I get to for the point where I think that people think that's possibly all that I may know. But if they only realize my vocabulary of songs is possibly greater than any other person here on the island. Yeah. I, I, I can stand and sing hundreds and hundreds of songs. Well, listen, I know you say 10 minutes. I think I've covered 10 minutes. I'm not going to impose on you. I'm not imposing here. I, it's a pleasure. 